and YouTube. God bless all of you who are focused on trying to live forever in the way that the only way possible. Jesus Christ. This is David Williams with Jesus Ministries. David Williams. It's a little cool where where I am, but probably not as cool as where you are, unless you're watching this from south of South Florida. Okay. So we're talking about philosophy versus reality. And in our talk about philosophy versus reality, what we're going to do is attempt to give a basis. We're going to talk about the difference. I could have titled this video fantasy versus reality, but I guess fantasy is is going to come up. We're going to talk about that. And we're going to describe how this affects all of our lives. There is a battle between philosophy and reality because when we talk about philosophy, philosophy can be dis can be defined as the the system of human thought. So the various ways that people think have been organized and they call that philosophy or you might describe your philosophy meaning the way that you think so when we talk about philosophy if you say well my philosophy on life is this and 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 we we live many of us live by philosophies it's it's a philosophy and not reality when it has nothing to do with reality it's just based on what you think so for instance uh, a man and, and and his wife split up. They divorce. And the man's best friend tells him, hey, man, listen, there's more fish in the sea. Okay, well, the reason why he's saying that is because his perspective on life is if you lose a woman, you can just go and get another one. It's as simple as that. So when we talk about philosophy... We're talking about personal beliefs and because we as humans, we've been around for almost or over 6,000 years. And in that time frame, there's nothing new under the sun. There are no new perspectives. You know, you might not know anybody who's, who's, who thinks like you. But there have been people on the planet and there are people on the planet who think like you do, who think like I do. They may not have all of the thoughts that we have. They may not. So there's obviously not another single person who has all of your thoughts and you don't have all of anyone else's thoughts. But we have types of thought. We have types of perspectives. We have types of views. OK, so philosophy, again, is the system of human thought okay our our belief systems the way we think all right and reality is described as the existence or the or or life life as it is in all of its forms so it's the function of nature how does life function how does nature function that's what reality is so reality is about how life functions, the, 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 the function of existence and philosophy is perspective and belief. All of us have beliefs. All of us have views. All of us have opinions. One of the things that makes social media so attractive and so drawing is that we can share our opinions. We can share our views. You might not have another place where you can be heard, where you can be seen, where you can seem happy, you understand, or where you can seem strong. You need a, you, you and I as people, we feel like we need an atmosphere, we need an environment, we need a platform, a forum where we can kind of be what we think we are, you know, kind of be ourselves in a controlled environment and we get to we get to determine how people see us we post when we want we say what we want that kind of a thing and so social media is really based on kind of giving people what they want 
of ourselves. So we get to determine again, or so we think, how the world sees us. And so it's a philosophical, it's a philosophical man's paradise. God bless you, Brother Charles. Okay, so philosophy is the system of human thought and reality is the function of nature. One of the things that, one of the, the two stories that God willing will go over in the Bible that explain the seriousness of this topic. In Exodus chapter 32, Moses is commanded by the creator to go up the mountain so that the God of creation can give him information. So the God of nature wanted to give him information on reality. Let me tell you how things are on the planet that you live in, that the, on the planet in which you live. Come up to this mountain and I'm going to talk with you there. And when I talk with you, when you come down from the mountain, I want you to teach others exactly what it is I want for them in life so that they benefit from the fact that they're alive. You have to ask yourself, do you want to benefit from being alive? So YOLO is a philosophy. You only live once. I feel stupid every time I say the word YOLO because it's the dumbest thing. I think it's just so dumb. I mean, you know, you got French terms like carpe diem. Carpe diem is like, and I'm sure there's a better way to say that, but carpe diem, is, it sounds cooler, you know? Oh, uh, but 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 YOLO is like dumb. Like that's dumb. That's dumb. Like it's not. It doesn't sound cool. In my view, that's my philosophy. My feel. My philosophy is it sounds stupid. So pardon me if I never say YOLO again. I may never say that term again. It's dumb. I don't. My my mouth doesn't like it. My brain doesn't like it. Like don't say that again, David. David, don't say that, man. That's stupid. So that's a philosophy. So you only live once is a philosophy. That's the acronym for Y-O-L-O. -O. You only live once. And the belief is live your life. Carpe diem is like seize the day. Hey, whatever you want to do, do it. Do it. Have fun doing it. Forget about consequences. Forget about responsibilities, man. What do you want to do right now? You want that burger from McDonald's? The Junior Mac or the Big Mac or the Bigger Mac? Whatever they got going on now with their new marketing campaign for the Big Mac? You want the biggest Mac? Go get you the biggest Mac. Forget about the fact that it might not be the healthiest thing. Forget about that, man. Come on, man. You only live once, meaning don't think about the consequences of your actions. Okay, so that's a, that's a philosophy. Moses goes up to the mountain so he can get reality. He needs info on how things work because he's here. We are alive. We need to be prepared to manage life. So a lot of us, whenever you associate with people who will support you, whether you're doing good things or bad things, you prefer philosophy, you prefer fantasy above reality. All of us have a preference. All of us, in some ways, enjoy fantasy. Some of us, to the degree that we have rejected reality and might classify as sinners, meaning we know there's a God, but we reject him and choose to live out our way of thinking. And then there are those of us who are sons of God who might be lukewarm, meaning you balance between what you believe. You believe what you want to believe, but then again, you believe the reality of God's word and you pick and choose. So you're, you're classified as lukewarm when you pick and choose whether you're going to obey God or whether you're going to obey you know, yourself. And then you have those of us who are trying to spend forever with God and we understand that our perspectives, our opinions are only going to get us in trouble. So we need as much truth and as soon as possible as we can get it. So reality is the function of nature and philosophy is the system of human thought. 
Moses goes up this mountain so God can give him the instructions on reality. How does life work? How does humanity work? Okay, I'm human. God, you made me human. How does that work? While he's up there, you've got a million plus Jews, Israelis, Hebrews, a million plus people at the base of the mountain. Moses, Moses and Joshua are on the mountain. Joshua has stopped at a halfway point and Moses is much higher than Joshua talking to God. The children of Israel, the Israelites are at the base of the mountain and they've been there for about 40 days, maybe not quite, but for about that long. And they start getting frustrated with the way that things were. So it's easy for us to get frustrated with reality. And many times when we get frustrated with reality, we delve into, we delve into fantasy, philosophy, entertainment. We don't like reality, and so we abandon it for periods of time. Some of us do this by going to sleep, meaning there are some of us that hate reality, and so we try to sleep it away. We don't like the way that things are. We don't like the job that we have to do. We don't like the family that we have to be around. We don't like the, the, our, our place in the financial world and so we go to sleep people who sleep a lot don't like reality and then you have people who love to go to the movies you might find them standing outside of a walmart or just inside of the walmart doors and they're at the machine that gives them the videos they've got two and a half hours 90 minutes to spend on a world that doesn't exist because they don't appreciate the world that does exist because they don't feel like they have any control in it. And because they don't feel like they have any control in it, they would rather abandon it altogether for at least two and a half hours. Then you've got the people who have season tickets or season passes or the television package, the, the, the cable television package that allows them to view all the games, all the college games, all the soccer games, all the NFL, NBA, MLB, NHL, Major League Soccer, Major League Lacrosse, Major League Arena Football, Major League Volleyball, everything. They're part of the, the, the fantasy football, hey man, my team won this week. These are the people who are going to walk around with the football jerseys, hey, my jersey says De De Desmond Hester. My, my, my jersey says, hey, I'm LeBron James today because I have on his jersey. And the Cleveland Cavaliers, they won against the Golden State Warriors. So I'm him today. I'm him today. So when you see this shirt, I want you to treat me like you would if you were really seeing LeBron. I know I'm not going to get all of his praise, but I'll get enough of it because I'm wearing his shirt. I'm wearing his city even though I'm here in sunny South Florida. And I've got his name on my back. I don't know if he beats his wife. I don't know if he's trying to hang himself. But what I do know is that for 48 minutes the night before, he put this orange thing in another orange thing that has shoelaces on it. And he is the best. He was the best guy running on the wood floor, putting that orange thing in the orange thing with shoelaces. So... He proved that he and the city that I do not come from, he proved that he's better, like he's a, he's a better man. Like, so the fact that he could put the orange thing in better than everybody else, he's a better man. Like, all together. World hunger? Forget world hunger, man. That's somebody else's job to solve that. Uh, uh, sex trafficking? Forget that, man. I don't care about no sex trafficking. I got an orange thing that's looking for another orange thing right now. And I've got to make sure that if a big guy stands in my way and wants to knock my teeth out, I will put this orange thing in that orange thing with the shoelaces and I will have much support. 
So the fact remains that when we give our thoughts to that, it's indicative. It indicates that we don't really like reality. Because what we're watching, what we're listening to, where we're going, when we put that down, when we stop watching that, when we stop listening to that, when we leave from where we've gone, we realize that time just left. It didn't prove, it didn't prepare us, it didn't give us any greater control of our environment. If anything, it stole from us because we thought that we were going to, you know, hey man, you might want to go to the improv tonight. You and your and your wife, you know, you go downtown, go to the improv, where you're gonna find some guy, he's gonna stand up, he's gonna tell some jokes. And you're gonna hear his philosophy in a humorous way. And you're gonna sit there, you're gonna laugh or not, and um, you know, you just spent that time. So the nation of Israel were not happy about their situation. They were, in their own mind, they were poor. And, uh, oh, that's a blessing. Uh, uh, in their own mind, the nation of Israel were poor. They had cattle. They had cattle. They had sheep. They had gold. But they really, they were living in the wilderness, okay? They were living in a place where things didn't grow. So they couldn't plant. And there was no free-flowing water where they were most of the time. And so they had to depend on God to drop down this substance from the sky every day. And they would gather the substance, they'd grind it together, and they'd make cakes with it. And they would eat the substance called manna. So they made these substances, or they, or, or they would... They would gather this substance called manna, and they would eat it. And they couldn't have it for the next day. If No matter how much they gathered, it would expire within 24 hours, except for on Friday. On Friday, it would last for 48 hours. They didn't like that. They didn't like not living in a nice area where they could plant and farm. That wasn't their reality. And because that wasn't their reality, they decided they were going to abandon reality. You know what, man? Forget reality. You know what? The guy Moses that supposedly God sent to free us from Egypt? No, man. We don't know where he is at this point. He went up the mountain last time we saw him. It's been over probably over 30 days. Maybe. Maybe it was just after. What we do see is that he goes up this mountain and he's not back for long enough for the influential people on the bottom to get frustrated. And the influential people down there among the congregation come up with an idea. Let's read that. So in Exodus 32, starting at verse 30, starting at verse one, and it says, and when the people saw that Moses delayed to come down out of the mount, the people gathered themselves together to Aaron and said to him, up or get up, make us gods which will go before us. For as for this Moses, the man that brought us up out of the land of Egypt, we don't know what's become of him. So for all they know, he's probably dead. And Aaron said to them, no, don't do it. No, that wasn't Aaron's response, at least not biblically. There was no biblical record that Aaron said, you better not do that. No, Aaron's response was, break off the golden earrings, which are in the ears of your wives and of your, uh, and of, of your sons and of your daughters and bring them to me. And all the people broke off the golden earrings, which were in their ears and brought them to Aaron. Aaron was Moses' older brother, by the way. He was also a priest ordained of God to teach the people about reality. So that was his job to ensure that the people had reality, had access to reality. Okay, so through peer pressure, he, 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 chose, not to, he chose not to confront their, their beliefs. He was afraid. Fear, the reason why the word of God describes God 
not giving us a spirit of fear is because fear when 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 it's not of God, like when we're not talking about the fear of God, we're talking about the feeling of dread, the feeling of danger. You feel like you're in danger. Fear when it doesn't come from God is what causes us to ignore reality and to concentrate emotionally, mentally, spiritually on fantasy, on something that could happen, on something that did happen. We don't know what's going to happen, but according to our estimation, this is what could happen. And so fear is my emphasis right now. The, 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 dang, the pain I could experience is, where, is what I'm concentrating on. So we're concentrated on danger. So Aaron's concentration, when these people gather around him and say, make us gods, meaning we want to change reality right now. So we want philosophy. We want belief. We, we don't care about truth right now. We believe that there is a creator. And we need something that represents him. Our idea of him, though, we don't want a God that determines how and when make us something and we will manipulate. We, we need something we can control. We don't want something that we can't control. We want something we can control. That's why many of us hate church because we can't control the leadership there. We can't control the congregation. We can't control how long it's going to be. We can't control anything. We, we, we're not in control. We can't control God. We can't control what's being said. Sometimes it's a bad environment. Sometimes it's a good environment. But the fact that we can't control it is one of the major things that keeps us from it. So instead of working with reality and trying to do what the will of God is so that we could build a church, no, man, I just stay home. Because I'm in control of whether I stay home or not. And my philosophy is the church is in you. But how can the church be in you? Do you have a bunch of people on the inside of you? We call that multiple personality disorder. You can't have. No, the church is a congregation. The church is a group of people. That have been called out. But my, my, my body is a temple. It sure is. That's where the Holy Ghost dwells. It doesn't make you a congregation of people. All right. So we can't control. We can't control. We like to just enjoy. I enjoy the presence of God when I'm at home by myself. Yeah, but Jesus said we're two or three are gathered in my name. There am I. Yeah, but for me, that might look like this. For me, that might look like that. I know because it's something that you've done. It's something that others who agree with you. Oh, yeah, man. Loose knit fellowship. Do what we want. Say what we want. Go where we want. No accountability. When the world in which you exist does not hold you accountable for your actions, it's fantasy. When the world that you live in doesn't hold you accountable for your thoughts and, and, and feelings when they're played out. If you're in a world where you can say what you want and do what you want, you're in a fake world. And that world is about to smash into reality. And that's why we can't spend any time in a fake world. So they say we want a fake world. But of course, they don't believe it to be fake. They say, Aaron, you're the representative. You're the leader now. We want you to make us gods so that we can have some inspiration in moving forward. Because we don't know what happened to that guy, Moses. Aaron told them, give me your jewelry, give me your earrings. And they did. Verse four says he received them at their hand, meaning he took them from them and shaped it or fashioned it with a graving tool. And after he or or, or it says he fashioned it with a graving tool after he made a molten calf 
or so it's letting us know that he shaped it into a molten calf. So he took the gold earrings and he 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 likely put it under some heat and he shaped it into a golden calf. Be that a young cow or be it a big cow like the Wall Street one on Wall Street, we don't know. But a lot of people, a lot of earrings probably would have, would have taken a lot of time to make it really, really big. God doesn't describe it here through the scripture. So suffice it to say, it was a golden calf, right? Uh, so in verse 4, he received the gold earrings at their hand and fashioned it with a graving tool after he had made a molten calf. And so, yeah, molten or melted, right? So, yeah, definitely some heat. And they said, and, and they said, and they said, these be your gods, O Israel, which brought you up out of the land of Egypt. So what we really could have entitled this was learning how to believe a lie. So when we talk about philosophy, we're talking about believing a lie. We're talking about having an opinion that doesn't coincide with reality. It's easy for you and I to have an opinion that dis agrees with the way that God created things to be. That's the importance of staying close to the Lord because he's the only one who's going to tell you how things are because he's the one who made things. Okay. So he says, so, so they said, these be your gods of Israel, which brought you up out of, out of the land of Egypt. So we saying we just created your, we just created God. We just created God. Now, how, what kind of response did they have to the God that they created? Verse 5, And when Aaron saw it, he built an altar before it, and Aaron made a proclamation and said, Tomorrow is a feast to the Lord. And they rose up early on the morrow and offered burnt offerings, meaning they brought their animals and killed them and burnt them unto that golden calf. And they brought peace offerings. And the people sat down to eat. They weren't eating manna. So make no mistake about it. They were not eating manna at this point. I'm not saying nobody brought manna to the, to the party. I'm not saying nobody showed up with some manna cakes, some manna rolls, and some manna rice. But when they killed their animals unto this demon god, they weren't eating manna. No, no, no. No more manna for us. We, we're we're, we're going to eat these cows that we took and these animals we, we brought. And so they sat down. They ate. And it says they offered their burnt offerings and they brought peace offerings. They sat down to eat and to drink. And they rose up to play. So that word play right there, it means they behaved sexually. So they had a sexual party. Right? Because that's what... She, because guess what? That golden calf was not going to get off of that, that stand. It wasn't going to run and spear them. The golden calf wasn't going to respond to the fact that they just killed animals unto gold. The golden calf wasn't going to do that. So the reason why we choose philosophy, the reason why we choose fantasy, the reason why we choose entertainment, the reason why we choose opinions over reality is because... Philosophy does not hold you accountable for your actions. It's just an opinion. Well, what my opinion is, well, listen, I'm just saying, I, I, I've got to give my two cents. Okay, so they did this because they wanted a new view. They wanted a new view of the world. They wanted a new view of the world. They didn't, they didn't want the view that was being given to them. You understand, you and I are always contending with God. And we're always trying to fight him for reality. We're always trying to fight God. The scripture says, let God be true and every man a liar. In Isaiah 55, the Lord says, my thoughts are not your thoughts. My ways are not your ways. My wife and I used to joke around, and when I say joke, what I really mean is uh, she and I used to, well, early on in our marriage, I had bought her 
a I bought her a a television series. This is when the, the when the the television series were first kind of uh, prepared on DVD. So you've got this television series. You know, it may, it may have been A Team or some old television series, The Cosby Show or Mash. Some television series. This was at the beginning of that. This was at the beginning of that where you could go into a store and find a television series. So I bought her a television series that she used to love, and it was called Mad About You with Paul Reiser. I forget his name and the other lady with the blonde hair. So she used to enjoy the television show, and so I bought her season one and season two. And if she hears me telling this story, she's probably not going to be so happy. She's cool, but it's just the image, the image that it conveys is not necessarily the best. So by the grace of God, I'm happy that we're not there. But hopefully she won't see this, and hopefully none of my brothers in the Lord will snitch. No snitching, man. No snitching. So um, I bought her this series, and she'd watch it because we didn't do the cable thing. We didn't do the cable thing, uh, and so she would watch the television series. I would be at work throughout the day. She might get home before I would. And she, while doing her other uh, things, she, oh, thank you, Sister Florence. Uh, while doing her other, while doing her, 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 you know, whatever it is that she was doing, she may have completed a task and now she's on the couch and she's watching various episodes of a fictitious relationship between this man and this woman. And so I come in the house and it may, and, and it may have even been a time where we had cable because when we moved into our first apartment, the apartment supplied us with free cable. And so she might be watching. I've, uh, it was called Lifetime or something like that. Lifetime, Lifetime, the Lifetime Network, the, the, the female network. The one where the men are all bad. So I come into the house and she's she's into this, you know, because it's entertaining. And I believe that as I'd enter this house, her attitude would be according to what she this real this fantasy world that she just spent however long looking at so she's looking at this fantasy world and guess what david is not that david does not meet the standard of a sitcom of i'm not paul i'm not paul from mad about you i don't i'm not as considerate as paul i have stances on god's word that Paul doesn't have. I'm younger. I don't have people writing my lines for me. Uh, I'm real. I'm a real person with real issues. And so, you know, I walk into the house. Hey, babe, how's everything? Particularly when she was watching The Lifetime. This guy beat his wife in the, in the movie. Oh, man. Now, how is she? She's feeling angry frenzied and she's looking at me like yeah or like i can't believe you fall so short of this glory right here the fact remains that her investment in that world is it altered her perspective of what could be of what should be and so trying to engage her, trying to interact with her, I had to deal with a perception she was giving from given by the by the mad about you. And we had to get rid of the mad about you. I said, no, no, this is the devil. 
So we will get rid of Mad About You. We will get rid of it. Some of us, that, that may not have been, some of us came under that bondage through pornography. You used to like pornography, seeing naked people, and now you have a type. Well, you know my type. You're, what you're saying is, philosophically, I like a woman. I like a man who looks this way. This, that, and other thing. So, you want your wife to meet that standard. You want her to look like Barbie. Or a black Barbie. Or Asian Barbie. You want her to look like that. Nice, small waist. Big chest, big legs. Yeah. I be, and I want her to treat me like pornography. And I want to treat her like pornography. And if we can't behave like pornography, the relationship is boring. Or you are trying to live out a fantasy. You're trying to live out a fantasy and you're trying to hold your wife accountable. You're trying to hold your husband accountable to what you dreamt, what you saw in a magazine, what you saw on a DVD, what you saw on the Internet. So the people of Israel, what they said was, we don't like the real God. We want to make some fake gods and say it's the real God. And they had just the man in Aaron to support their views. But we can't do that. We can't support people's views just because I was told by someone a while ago years ago when we first started doing ministry that people only have a 15 minute attention span and so you want to tailor your message to ensure that you don't miss people because they can only pay attention for 15 minutes well because it wasn't the Lord that determined that I stopped talking at the 15 at 15 minutes I did not and I decided that in order to strengthen people's ability to hear God's word I'm going to talk for as long as I believe God would want me to talk now, in the early days of YouTube, I only had 10 minutes on YouTube. So, of course, yeah, I'm going to talk for 10 minutes. I might do a part two, might do a part five. The fact remains that we give people the information, yes, on some level according to their ability to hear it. But on another level, we give it to them like God would have us to give it to them. And so the closer we get to God, the better we understand how to minister also, uh, when it comes to that, the faithful people will listen for as long as is necessary for them to hear the truth. So if you change your method, if you're trying to please God and lead people to God, and you change your method to accommodate the superficial people, the lukewarm people, then the soldiers will say, ah, this is not enough. And the soldiers will back away and gravitate towards something else. They'll either stay in sin or they'll find somebody who's willing to speak on God's behalf without the filter of fear. So one of the things that, uh, and, and, and I didn't really intend on mentioning this or going in this particular direction because I do want to get back into what I was talking about, if God wills. But one of the things about doing social media social media ministry is this that when we cover topics that excite the senses the mind and the emotion people are more likely to view the things that we say and do so if we get on here with some cinnamon from walmart with a big old spoonful uh, and put a big old, you know, put cinnamon in, in the spoonful. And let's have a David Williams cinnamon challenge. 
Let's have a David Williams ice bucket challenge. Let's have a David Williams selfie challenge. Let's have a, 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 a hair grease challenge. Chicken bone challenge. So if you do stuff that makes you look stupid because people like stupidity because they hate reality. So because people enjoy stupidity, you could have a lot of views. Now, as a minister of the gospel, I might not get on here and do a cinnamon challenge. But what I might do is I might search for controversial things. Some of you are still connected to ministries that seem to find their identity pointing out evils of society. And when you, exa and, and when you examine the evil, your question is, wait a second. I have been following your ministry for 15 years. I've been following your ministry for 10 years. I've been following your ministry for, 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 for five years. And the bulk of the content, you still seem to specialize in who's saying what. You still seem to specialize in all the latest deception. The Sam's and Costco table deception and the housing crisis deception and the Blue Beam project deception back from 2002. But we're bringing it back and we got the Beats headphone deception and I've got 200,000 views. And you realize, wait a second, either your audience is really dumb and superficial and have no love for the truth or they're all children and they're still out there watching stuff that they should not be watching and you still have to talk to them about why they shouldn't listen to Lady Gaga and so every new person who comes out oh I got the chief I got the I got the info on Chief Keith Chief Keith exposed the 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 alien the deception behind Chief Keith, the alien deception behind the Waka Flock ASAP Rocky and Lil G's Lil B's Lil B B B. Okay, so the concept is I need to keep these dumb viewers because they don't demand that David. When you first were ministering to me, man, back in 2008, you were talking to me about hip hop and stuff. Praise God for that, Brother David. Well, most of your audience, we've grown past that, Brother David. And the ones that have not grown past that, let them find somebody else. But as far as you're concerned, I need to keep my marriage intact. I need to overcome fear fear hey david i deal with rebellion hey man i'm governed by arrogance and pride hey man i'm being controlled by a desire to buy more and more and more church clothes even though i have two closets full of church clothes i'm having an issue with covetousness i'm having an issue with lust i'm having an issue with corporate greed i i, I want to go up the corporate ladder not for god but for me i want to be somebody i wasn't anybody back in the day and i want to be somebody today what i'm saying is when we at jesus ministries produce these videos i get about a fraction of what i used to when i was doing the videos about oh this guy that person Let's talk about T.D. Jakes. Let's talk about Juanita Bynum. Let's talk about Joe Osteen. Let's talk about Rick Warren. I'm not saying God doesn't still want us to preach against evil. I'm saying that we do it not because we feel like I need a base. I need a, a subscriber base. I want to keep my, my constituency. I want to keep the people happy. We want to keep the people saved. And people who like drama. So we did a video on Eddie Long because it's significant. There was a judgment. It was a judgment, open judgment. It was judgment in the land. Okay, God judged an individual. Uh, and it wasn't about, you see, I told you this guy. No. Hey, we were trying to examine why 
we were trying to examine why we con why we wonder where people go when they die. That's what the Eddie Long video was about. We were wondering why people ask where do where do people go when they die? Because we're trying to figure out should we do the things that they did? Was their behavior consistent with reality? And we're also we were also trying to figure out when we think back at that person, were they godly or ungodly? So you address that. You don't just say, hey, listen, let me tell you what this guy did. Let me show you what he did. Let me show you his tax returns. So philosophy and fantasy allows us to abandon reality for, for fiction. Okay, so philosophy, which is really the human's perspective, is prepared is is preferred above reality because it doesn't command that you respond to it so you can have an opinion and your opinion doesn't require somebody to respond to it they can perfectly ignore you because it's all in your head and in your emotions so philosophy or a human perspective is so we prefer reality we, we prefer philosophy we prefer fantasy above reality because reality demands that we reality demands that we that we obey it philosophy does not reality is inescapable and all the laws of existence are set and executed by god so because god sets and executes the laws of reality we don't want reality. We get uncomfortable with it. We would rather a reality that we can manipulate. We'd rather relationships that we can manipulate. We'd, re we'd rather worlds that we can manipulate. But re reality is inescapable. It is the way that God created it to be. People who prefer Islam over Christianity, they do so, whether it's Islam or atheism, they prefer these systems of thought because without man, the laws of Islam, you can't implement that because it's a man-made deception. You can't implement atheism because it's just a, it's a belief that there's no God. It makes us feel like no one's going to hold us accountable. When you talk about Islam, I, I don't mind you being Muslim as long as you keep your Muslimness over there. Keep your Islam, keep your Sharia, keep your perspective. But see, when you're a Christian, it's difficult. Because, and my, not difficult to be a Christian, when you tell your boss that you're a Christian, if you tell your boss you're Muslim, he might not like that because he might feel like you might want to harm him for not being Muslim. But if you're not, if you're, if you're not one of those Muslims, then he doesn't really have anything to fear. Because your religion, you can keep private but as a christian what you're saying is you embody truth and you preach it and you are supposed to help others find it then you become an obstacle to him so just by living as a christian your lifestyle calls people to accountability and people don't like that like the sister said they love their lives. You know, we love our lives. So, so atheism is, 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 is a favorite belief system because it teaches us that we're not going to be accountable for our actions. That's why we prefer fantasy. Grand Theft Auto and, 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 and The Sims, where you can... I used to love the, the computer game The Sims because with The Sims, you can create a little fake world, have girlfriends, be rich... Drive nice cars. Yeah, because it's fake. You don't like the fact that in reality, you can't have five girlfriends. In reality, you can't have a huge house. In reality, you can't have this. It's not that nobody can have it. It's just you. Most of us cannot. And so we like to go to these alternate realities. Reality contains accountability and holds people responsible for their actions or their inaction. So reality contains accountability that's why we try to avoid it 
because it demands that you act in the right way. Many prefer man-made systems because they can be changed. Man-made systems can be changed. Man-made systems can be ignored. That's why we love the Constitution of the United States and other systems like it. That's why we prefer democracy. Hey, man, listen to what I tell you. Democracy, man, democracy, democracy, democracy. Why? Because everybody is subject to my view. That's what we want. We want people to be subject. You want, we want to control people. And we want to control situations. So many prefer man-made systems because they can be ignored. They can be changed. They can be, you can, you can obey it when you want to. You can selectively implement it. That's why Israel wanted a king and no longer God. Okay? So like Brother Joseph is saying, that's why our minds have to be renewed. Because there's absolutely no benefit of being an opinionated person. Some of us are very opinionated, meaning we have all types of thoughts and feelings and emotions and ideas that are inconsistent with reality. We know, if you say, well, David, how, how do I know that I prefer philosophy over reality? When you entertain yourself with fictional stuff, if you prefer fictional novels, if you prefer fictional movies, if you prefer fictional books, fictional music, fictional uh, alternate reality like sports and games, if people who love sports, it's, man, listen, first of all, outside of the fact that they're fixed, outside of the fixed Super Bowl, the fixed NBA championship, outside of the fact that it's fixed because wealthy mobsters are betting on this, it's just, it's like W, it's wrestling. It's like performance wrestling. You're watching Marvel Comics. It's fictional. These guys are exercising for real. And they're going out there and throwing that brown oval across the grass. Hey, catch this oval. See, that's an oval. You just caught that oval. And the oval has shoelaces on it too. Everybody's up with these shoelaces. See, the oval has shoelaces. The, the 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 hockey nets got shoelaces, a bunch of laces. What's really going on? What's really going on? I think that's a conspiracy. I think it's a conspiracy. We know we prefer philosophy when we entertain ourselves with fiction, movies, books, music, alternate realities like sports and video games, social media. Listen, get on social media for a purpose. Get on social media for a purpose. We're out here to preach the gospel. We're out here to love each other. We're not out here to just to, hey, look, look, hey, hold on. I went to lunch today. I want to show you how I do big things when I eat lunch. Here's a picture. Go on, give me a second. I need to take a picture of my food and share it on social media. Because someone needs to take 15 seconds out of their reality and stare at my food. At Cheesecake Factory. Give me a second. There it is. Upload. Yep. Now someone who's at work is going to see that. And instead of focusing on filing those papers, they're going to focus on what I just did. Maybe it'll make give them some ideas for dinner. Pray, praise God. You gave somebody some ideas for dinner. Okay, you know what? That's how we're going to season those pork chops. So social media. We, if you love celebrities, you love fiction. You know what? You really convinced me that you were a murderer in that last video that I saw you in. I love you. If you love politics, if you love politics and you know a bunch of... Now, I'm not saying if you are mindful of the laws of your society. I'm saying if you are mindful of the philosophical rhetoric, the back and forth, then you don't like reality. Because in reality, you know God runs that. In reality, you know God, the king's hand is in the heart of the king's hand is in the heart of the Lord. Like the rivers of water, he turns it wherever he will. You know President Trump can only make the decisions that come from upstairs, that come from the higher dimension, that come from the Lord. Only the Father can tell the presidents what to do, be it good or bad. Right? Barack Obama, George W., George H. W., Bill Clinton, Ronald Reagan, all of them, Gerald Ford, Harry Truman. 
all of them take their orders from the God of heaven. And if the God of heaven says, hey, conspire for the destruction of your nation, that's exactly what they're going to do. Oh, no, no, he wouldn't do it. He's not like the others. He, he's not with the big banks. There's no Donald Trump. No, no. He Listen, when God tells these guys in their hearts through devils, turn on your nation and sell them into slavery. That's exactly what's going to happen. So we don't listen to Donald Trump. We, we pray for his salvation and for his godly govern, governance. And President Obama and George W. and Bill Clinton and Angela Merkel or Angela Merkel and all of them. And Holland, the president of France, Holland. We pray for them all. And Justin Trudeau in Canada and the guy Duterte from the Philippines. We pray for the people in the Philippines. We pray for the people in the Philippines. The Jamaicans, the Haitians, the Trinidadians, the Bahamians. We pray for them. We don't we don't play around and pretend that that Ghana's politics is real, that Chad's politics is real. It's not real. Liberia's politics are not real. They need to do righteous things. If they need advice, we can give them some truth, but we're not here to play games. So reality, so if you're into politics, you're into a fake world, unless you're talking about actual change or changing of laws for the betterment of the purpose of man from God's perspective. If you're heavy into culture, happy St. Patrick's Day, kiss me, I'm Irish. You like fantasy. Christmas, I'm gonna be nice to you for a week, two weeks, potluck, you like fantasy. So, fictional movies, books, music, alternate realities like sports and gaming, social media, celebrities, politics, culture. If you're into that stuff, then to that degree, you are into fake worlds. Reality is the existence from which rewards and prosperity comes. The Lord told Joshua, if you want good success, you have to pay attention to what's real. And what's real? This book of the law, this book of the law will not depart from your mouth. This book of the law will not depart from your mouth, but you will meditate in it day and night that you may pay attention to do all that's written in it. For then you will make your way prosperous and then you will have good success. That's Joshua 1, 8. So, in a, so when our reality, when reality, because there's only one reality, and then of course, so reality is about understanding God and the stuff that he's done. And that's what the scriptures describe. Who God is and what he's done and how he works and deals with man. So reality is the existence. So your rewards, real pleasure, real peace, real benefit, real relationships all come from our knowledge of God and obedience to his voice. So if you want to benefit from reality, you have to know God and you have to obey his voice. And lastly, receiving Jesus is the start of all of this. If you have not committed to Jesus, if some of you say, I've not been baptized because you don't have to be baptized to get saved. If you're on your deathbed and you don't have time to get baptized, I understand that. If you have an opportunity to be baptized into Christ Jesus and you say, well, no, my philosophy, my theology, my perspective is that because of the few exceptions, I don't have to be baptized in order to be saved. Well, Jesus said he that believes and is baptized because he believes it's the same thing. If you believe, you'll be baptized. If you don't believe, you won't be baptized. He said he that believes and is baptized will be saved. He that does not believe will be damned. So he doesn't have to say he that does not believe and isn't baptized because he's saying that not believing will produce not being baptized. So not being baptized equals not believing because you don't believe all the words that he's spoken. And so if you believe that you can independently pursue God and say you're a part of the congregation of the Lord, that's just there and here and all over the place, you're deceived. You don't like that, but the scriptures say that. Apostles, prophets, evangelists, pastors, teachers for the perfecting of the saints. Now, if you're in jail for your faith, if you absolutely cannot meet with a fellowship, I understand that. If you absolutely cannot meet with a fellowship, I understand that. Like you're in jail and you and ISIS is trying to follow you, you know, yeah, you're hiding. You're you're having church under 
in a cave. But when the Spirit of God makes himself available to you, like he is now, and you say, no, I can kind of pick and choose when and what to apply. No, you don't have reality. You have philosophy. It's your view. So receiving Jesus is the entry point of facing reality and preparing to be blessed in reality. Okay? So, God bless all of you. Let's abandon philosophy, false, uh, abandon deception, lies. Let's abandon it. It takes grace to do it, but the Spirit of God can help us to do it. So, God bless all of you. Yes, Mark 16, 16. On down is the way he that believes and is baptized will be saved. He that does not believe will be damned. So let's not be damned. Amen. Let's 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 abandon abandon stuff that's just gonna steal your focus, man. All right. So God bless all of you who love the Lord Jesus Christ and who are striving for perfection in him. If you are in the West Palm Beach area or if you want to move to West Palm Beach, listen, we encourage you to pray about it, relocate. Uh, if you want to give into the work of the Lord here, pray about it. Bless the work of the Lord as the work of the Lord is blessing you. You're free to do that as we prosper the sons of God in the faith. And just stay connected. God willing, we'll be talking to you within the next 24. 